वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स फॉर द आफ्टरनून सेशन कैन यू ऑल हियर मी गुड सम पीपल से कैन यू डिस्क्राइब ए लिटल बिट अबाउट वॉट वन कैन एक्सपेक्ट वेन वी मेडिटेट वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट सेवरल थिंग्स वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट मेडिटेशन इज डूइंग नथिंग टू अस मोस्ट कॉमन एक्सपीरियंस we can expect that uh, we can think of a lot of things which we were not thinking about when we were not meditating like we can remember where we lost our keys <laughs> where we placed the telephone and very often we can go to sleep they say meditation is a better sleeping pill than the pill you buy in the pharmacy there's a reason for that the reason is that we are awake in the physical body because our attention is operating from behind the eyes when we are awake we are behind the eyes if we are just a notional point of life supposing we are just a point of life which moves in the body then that point of life that makes us aware is behind the eyes we open our eyes we can see if we are not behind the eyes if you open our eyes we won't see and that happens it happens to us it happens every night when we go to sleep when we go to sleep you can have some of your eyes open not completely halfway most people don't completely close their eyes when they sleep the little bit is open and what is happening in front becomes part of your dream sequence supposing you are sleeping and somebody passes in front of you in the dream that person or somebody like that person will also move so you are connecting what you are seeing and what you are dreaming but you are not seeing what is passing in front of you you are seeing the dream why is that because that notional point of light is not behind the eyes but has gone down to the throat supposing you were a very masterful yogi and had done yogic practices by which you could remain semi alert semi alert when you are sleeping and dreaming and you want to touch your eyes when you're dreaming with your hands you will touch your throat and you will think you are touching your eyes which shows that the notional point of your consciousness does not remain always there it moves down when you go to sleep it moves down to this throat when you are dreaming it moves further down little bit further down when you are feeling you are not dreaming dreaming at all or in the gaps between the dreams and the sleep state so this movement also is being used by the yogis to bring the attention by concentrating on the lower chakras the six chakra yogic practices are all based upon moving your point of attention down there having different experiences from there and they relate to a created body which is not this body dream body is a created body when you make a body from heart chakra or lower chakras kundalini reversal chakras when you do those things the point of uh, your conscious awareness where you are operating from shifts in the physical body so that is why the tendency to sleep is very strong because we are doing meditation every night when we go to sleep by becoming unaware of our body and becoming aware of something else so that is why the practice of vacating your body is a constant practice so everybody is doing that's why tendency to go down is very strong and we go to sleep very strong tendency i remember great masters master great master baba sawant singh his master was baba jamal singh and baba jamal singh used to tell his disciples be very careful if you meditate you'll go to sleep in fact in the little place in his small hut in gurdaspur district in punjab india where he used to meditate a lot he had made a hook on top of the ceiling 
and he had tied his hair with a little rope. So when he would sleep, it would pull down. So I'm talking of a perfect living master. So the tendency to sleep is very strong. I was once conducting a meeting in Bruce, Wisconsin, many years ago. And I was telling people to meditate and say, close your eyes, do this. After a while, I could hear my own snoring. <laughs> so I said, did I really snore? I opened my eyes, everybody was staring at me. <laughs> but I turned it around to say, I'm giving you an example of how I see it. <laughs> Just made a, made a good excuse, not a very good excuse. So this is, I am telling you what to expect. For a long time, this thing can go on. People sometimes get disappointed. They get disappointed that nothing is happening in meditation. It's all dark. What can we do? So actually, the experiences start much later. You can induce some experiences by a lot of long meditation. I once thought meditation is the only cure for our ignorance. And I was very young. Actually, I was a college student. I meditated so much, eight hours at a stretch. Now I don't recommend to anybody to do eight hours. I got nothing by eight hours. So I found that it is not the time spent on meditation. It is the intensity of longing you have for the beloved that makes a difference. It's a very different thing. The actual experience of spiritual experiences takes place when you are longing for the beloved, longing for your master, longing for God in human form. is so strong that that's all you want. And that pulls your attention rapidly from the body and takes you to the image of the master and then you find who master is. Now that comes after a lot of practice. It comes when you are using all possible means of expressing your love and devotion for the master. Meditation without love and devotion is very hollow. I have shared with you before the story of my friend Hira Singh from Ludhiana in Punjab. He was initiated by great master about the same time I was initiated. And he meditated very regularly. Not like me, sometimes a lot of meditation, like no meditation, questioning everything. I was different. He was very dedicated satsangi. So he followed the rules and he meditated two and a half hours every day. Maintained a very strict vegetarian diet according to the instructions given to him. And it is after 40 years of our initiation that I met him. I met him because he had a little factory in Ludhiana, in the town where we lived, where I also got educated for a while and worked for a while. So he did his good meditation regularly, but for 40 years he had no experience inside. He said, I must be very unlucky, my karma must be very heavy, that I can't see anything. Maybe I'm not designed to have anything. Maybe my system is not working. Maybe I have... I am going to wait for next four lives. Whatever he had heard from people, thinking like that. There was another master who came to his house for giving satsang because he had a big house and a big lawn in front and he could accommodate a lot of people there. Great master also visited his house. The other masters, some of different lineages, also visited his house. It was a very good satsangi. So once there was a master visiting him and I took one of my American friends with me. He happens to be here somewhere, yes. <laughs> he will vouch that I'm telling a very true story. The master was giving a discourse and we both were standing at the back wanting to see the master and see Hira Singh, my friend. So master saw us and he beckoned to us to come near. So we went close to him and I said to him, please finish your satsang, your discourse that you are giving and we'd like to spend a few moments. I brought a friend of mine from USA. 
Master said, satsang finished, that's more. <laughs> which, was, which was very impressive for my friend. <laughs> to see the closeness, we went inside. And we had a nice time with the master. And then people began to ask me some things. How is America? How are you doing? How is great master's prophecy that, uh, this, that the actual spiritual seeking will shift from the east to the west and go in a big way to the United States. He said those things. People were asking me questions. Some asked questions about my meditation also. Some people asked questions about on spiritual path, which is normal. People just ask these things. After this, Hira Singh came to me and he said, I have to ask you a question. I said, what is your question? He says, I have meditated strictly according to the instructions given to me at initiation. Two and a half hours by the clock every day for 40 years. Seen nothing. Inside, felt nothing. As yet, I have kept up saying, no, master has told me do it, I am doing it. It's almost become like a duty and getting no result of it. On the other hand, he said, you seem to have got something. I said, how can you feel? I may be like you too. He said, no, if you didn't have anything, you couldn't give the answer to questions like that. That is why I'm asking you this question. I said, let me tell you a secret. The secret is, I know nothing. I saw nothing like you. I'm just like you. But when somebody asks me a question, I talk to great master inside my head and say, master, this person is asking this question. What is the answer? Master tells the answer. I speak out. People think I am giving the answer. It's not my answer. It's the great master's answer. He said, all right. Ask the great master that you initiated Hira Singh. And he is following your instructions. For 40 years he has got nothing. I said, when great master came to your house, why didn't you ask him? He said, I did. What did he say? He said, he smiled and said, continue your meditation with love and devotion. I said, there's so many masters have come into your house. Didn't you check with them? Instead of checking with a guy who is not a master, he said, I checked with the masters. What did they say? They smiled and said, continue your meditation with love and devotion. I'm going on doing it. Now I'm asking you. I said, I told you the secret. I'll have to refer your question to my master. And when he gives the answer, I'll give it to you. He's all right. Go sit inside and talk to your master. And give me the answer. I said, master is not so easily accessible. He takes time to make an appointment and to get an answer. He said, how long does it take? He said, about six months. I, because I want to come back to America and go back next time and after six months. He said, all right, I'll wait. So I went back to United States, from United States to India after six months, went to Ludhiana, met Hira Singh. I said, got the answer for you. Now, what is the answer? I said, great master said, tell Hira Singh, continue to do your meditation with love and devotion. <laughs> the very answer all the masters gave, the very answer the great master gave first time that you asked, he said, then why have I not made any progress? I said, you missed out the last few words of the answer. You thought he's saying, continue your meditation. You did not notice every one of them said, continue your meditation with love and devotion. Secret. Meditation without love and devotion is hollow. It's a mechanical exercise of the body. It does nothing. In fact, it increases your ego. I am doing two and a half hours. I am doing so much meditation. The I becomes strong, becomes a bigger obstacle in spiritual path. That is why never forget the secret is love and devotion. We start with repetition of words. We call Simran, Mantra, repetition. Very good to control the mind to some extent. Not too much, but some extent. We, if sound comes inside, we say, hear the sound, we hear the sound. All mechanical things. 
not spiritual what is spiritual about repeating words physical words what spiritual about hearing sounds not spiritual at all it's all physical mental then the master appears and we are not sure if he is the master maybe the mind is making it up he image comes disappears comes and goes away and we don't know whether to accept it or not if we are initiated by the perfect yogi master he gives us a device to check if the mind is making up his image or he is really there the device is very simple that the words he asks us to repeat during meditation he empowers them so that the negative entity including the mind cannot make up his image cannot make up his eyes and his forehead the rest of the face can be made up by the mind but not the eyes and the forehead of a master this is a good device it's just a, again a mechanical device so that we can check if the master is there when the master comes and goes we have heard radiant form of master will come and waiting for the radiant form of the master the master is appearing he not radiant enough so we don't talk to him we waiting for a radiant master we have our own impression what a radiant master means we think radiant means is light flowing out of him and some pictures i have seen people drawing the light flowing out of master coming right towards you that's only in paintings and pictures he is exactly like his out, outside he appears inside why we call him radiant form master is he can be seen in utter darkness you can close your eyes cover them up cover double cover them up you can still see him clearly that's the radiant part but you are also radiant at that time objects are also radiant at that time we meditate we can see so many things so the radiant only means that he is visible in darkness when he is stabilized then we have a good conversation with him in and out then what what should we do after that nothing is his job now he promised come to me up to that point where you can see me after that is my job your meditation is over but you still keep on meditating not only that i used to see great masters giving a discourse and his favorite sat sangis his disciples sitting in front are closing their eyes who are they trying to see he is sitting in front of you and you close your eyes don't you see what you are trying to see sitting in front just because he is in physical form he is not less of a master than he will be inside so we do not realize the spiritual path is a relationship with somebody who you have created and who comes with all the precautions we can take is not made up by a negative entity and all you have to do is to follow him but then people some are clever they realize what i am telling you because they have heard the same thing i am just sharing with you so they forget they talk to master every day they talk exchange have jokes with fly with the master spend their time with the master as much as possible when they do that even when they are not meditating they can feel master is with them and sometimes he manifests even externally and they can see him out there also it's a beautiful experience when that happens master takes them according to the plan already set up depending upon the karma with which you are born the stage at which you are he takes you gradually from stage to stage great experience he shows you how vast the area of creation is he shows you the physical creation you can see travel in the physical world and see he shows you the astral physical astral overlap where you see this world and the next world also where you see people who have died many are still there and you can see them he takes you and shows you all those things he takes you to the upper part of the astral plane which is beyond the overlap no physical it's a totally different kind of world there and you see this physical world is divided most divided place in the whole of creation it divided into countries states and it is administered run the system on this on this physical plane are run by governments run by different governments in small 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 portions which we call countries 
initials. Astral plane is not run like that. It's run by one government. That's a very big difference. It is vaster than this physical plane, and yet it's only ruled by one. And there you find that the master can even show you the ruler of that astral plane. That's in the higher part of the astral plane. When you see that, most amazing experience takes place when the ruler of the whole astral plane comes and puts his head on your master's feet as you are watching him. You can't believe what's happening. Because he's, he's a king of that place. He's a ruler. He decrees how the whole astral plane has to run. And yet, he's feeling so, so happy to see the master. So you get surprised. First time it happens, you get very surprised. That what is happening? And the master explains to you, look, these people know because they have stayed here for a long time. They know this is not their home. They are also souls like us. This ruler of the whole universe, he is the creator of the physical plane and the astral plane sitting here. And he does not have the chance to have the trip which you and I are making. This is karma. He is here at a high level because of his karma in a human body. Karma committed in the human body brought him to this place. He can't go anywhere from here except he will have to go back. He is willing to go back to human life to go further up. Although he is already further up. Very strange experiences. So, some experiences in the beginning are different for different people. But above that, when the master takes you, the experience is very similar. Some skip the experience. Some don't want to see all this. And the master skips that. Some say, we are not interested in anything mental, any of these words, astral, physical. We don't want to see anything. We just want to go to our true home. The master can go with blinders of those people those souls and take them back. It's a long story. I could keep on sitting and telling you the entire journey. It's so remarkable. You can expect that. But the beginning will be like I indicated in the beginning. And that is how we start experiencing. Needs a lot of patience. Needs a lot of patience. But the earlier you start your meditation with love and devotion, the better it is. Otherwise, it will be like Hirasi. Otherwise, you will say, I've meditated so long, nothing is happening. I went back after six months more to Hirase. He made more progress internally and externally in those six months than he had made in 40 years. So that's the difference in that. I'm happy to share these experiences with you because so many of you are doing meditation. You are born in a very great place. The access of spirituality of real spiritual experiences is shifting to the United States. So I am seeing as an observer, as one who came just to observe how Great Master's prophecy is going to be shifted to the United States, I am observing these things. And they are all bringing forth in different places in this country teachings of Great Master, meditation of the light and sound, meditation the same way, and meditation with love and devotion. I thought I am observing all these and watching with great excitement, great master's prediction that so much spirituality will come here. Masters will be born here. And East, China, India, those East which produced perfect living masters in the past will be very busy setting up new factories, new industries, making more money, which this country has done in the past. So there are a lot of things are happening right now around me and which are showing the shift in money-making to the East, spirituality to the West. And the United States has been picked up a special place. And I heard Great Master telling Julian Johnson, American disciple of his, that you will be taking the, you have come to take the spiritual path into the United States in a big way. So that is why I thought I'll share these things with you instead of giving you more talk about something that you already know. Meditation with love and devotion. Secret. I think uh, Jonathan has some questions today. 
If he can read out a few, I'll try to answer. Where does true, real initiation occur? And where, what is crooked tunnel? Where does true, real initiation occur? True, real initiation occurs at the bottom of the physical astral plane behind our eyes in the wakeful state. When a perfect living master initiates us, he takes responsibility for taking our soul back to our true home and he places himself in a real form inside at the third eye center behind. When we meditate and have withdrawn our attention sufficiently, he appears inside. He appears after we have had some experiences which vary with different people. Some people find the experience of flying in the sky, long flying. They see moon and sun and star and then he appears. Some people during the hearing of the sound inside, he appears. Sometimes they see him even otherwise without anything. Some people see him by doing dhyan. Dhyan is contemplation of the face of a master. When you contemplate that, the same face which you can recall from memory of seeing him becomes alive and begins to talk to you. That is dhyan. Some people get the experience from dhyan. So the initiation takes place there. We only come to know if we are initiated when we meet the radiant form of the master there. Till then, it's a blind belief. What is the crooked tunnel? The crooked tunnel is a name in India, Indian language. We've called it Banknal. The Banknal is an overlap of the astral and the causal plane. This, this world is made of space and time. And if you stretch space and time in all directions, they become infinite. Supposing infinity is a number and you make this physical world, including all the galaxies and all the space and time ever created and expand it, it will become like a huge big globe, a sphere. If it's equidistant from you at all times, it's a sphere all the time around you. That's how it has been constructed in space and time, as a big sphere. The astral plane is also a bigger sphere. Part of it is overlapping the sphere. That means there's part of the physical world which overlaps the astral world. And that has been so arranged so that the people who die are in the overlap can still experience where they are attached here. They can be in disembodied spirits in the physical world and some people can even contact them in the physical world through different means. So that overlap, first overlap between the physical and astral looks like a fish because you can see if two spheres overlap, they become like a fish. The second overlap is in the, cause, in the astral and causal plane. It's a bigger overlap, but that overlap is in a tilted position. These are space-time things. They're tilted position so in the middle of that second overlap, it looks like we are in a tunnel. If you are in the center of the tunnel, you can see the astral plane and the other way you see the causal plane. That's the only point from where we can see both astral and causal planes and have experiences of both in that overlap. That point has been called the big knot or the crooked tunnel. Crooked tunnel because it turns, unless you are there, you can't see both. When you are there, you can see both. That's why it's been called the crooked tunnel. That also looks like a big fish. When people read in the Bible that Jesus Christ served two fish to 50,000 people or 5,000 people, people think they might have caught fish from the pond and might have broken small pieces. That's not true at all. He is referring to these two fish. He is giving spiritual knowledge of what you can expect inside that the two fish are looking like fish and they are the overlaps of physical astral and astral causal. The astral causal overlap contains the bunk null or the crooked tunnel. How can I get your radiant form so I never feel lonely? How I can get your radiant form so I never feel lonely? I just described it. If you get the radiant form inside, you will never be alone. 
loneliness is a strange experience. We all have it. At some point or the other, we feel lonely because we don't find anybody like us. Sometimes we think somebody is very much like us, soulmate. It just takes a few months to be with a soulmate. <laughs> People come to me for my blessings. And uh, we are soulmates, we are made for each other, we, we have just identical views, both same. Give a blessing, I say, bless them. Six months later, three months later, they are in divorce court. And then they come and tell me, we knew from day one we were not made for each other. And I tell them, that's not what you said on day one. So that is why we have a loneliness because all our relationships with people are skin deep. Nobody fully understands us. Perfectly with master fully understands us. And when you manifest him inside and can talk every day, you realize he knows more about you than even you know yourself. And that is why loneliness disappears in that friendship. And I said, a perfect living master is a friend first, master of the world. A good quote from my dear friend, Dr. Ishar Singh, the veterinary doctor, whose experience I share with him, that if he is not a friend of yours, he can't be your master. It's not somebody to be worshipped from a distance. It is somebody that you know personally. And it must be a physical connection. It must be physically known to you. You can't have that connection with past masters or those who are far away or you are never seen. That's not possible. That's not the spiritual path. Certainly not what great master shared with me and I found it useful. Sheikh Farid of Shakar Khanji, Sheikh Fadid Shakar Khanji was a perfect master. His own master was Sheikh Kutbuddin. When Sheikh Kutbuddin was alive, Farid told his son, go and get initiated. It's a great opportunity. A perfect living master is in our presence and he has blessed me with initiation. You get initiated. And the son, like many of our young people, said, I have plenty of time to do that. Let me enjoy life now. This is not for young people, it's for old people. That kind of argument, and he avoided. One day, Kutbuddin died. His body was like before they buried him. And the son heard about it. He ran quickly, shaved off his head, which was customary in those days for initiation, and put his head on the dead master's feet. And Farid is looking at him. And he says, you are putting your head on the body of a person for whom I have had the highest regard, highest respect, highest love. And yet I tell you, you are getting nothing out of it. This is not the master. And then he explained, unless a living human being, a living master can hold your hand, you cannot say that you got anything from the master. It's not a distant relationship. So that is why when you have a person in your life who's your master and you manifest him inside, you can talk to him every day and he's with you all the time, the loneliness disappears forever, never comes again. Otherwise, we are always lonely. One more question. It causes me anxiety knowing that this world is illusion. Please help. It causes me anxiety knowing that this world is illusion. Please help. I can help you. This world is not illusion, but real. Happy? <laughs> It is real. Tell me, if it was not real, would I take the trouble of coming and talking to all of you? If it was all illusion, am I talking to some shadows or something? If I am myself sitting here talking to you, obviously it is real. The question really is, what is real? What makes a thing real? What makes a thing real is your experience of its reality. And what is the experience which is actually real? The fact that this person wrote this note was real. Note is written here. The experience of writing the note is real. 
The experience of my reading the note is here. Note is not. If you can understand that secret about reality, a reality is an experience. But we project it to things outside. So you can't call it illusion. That's what I was trying to explain in the morning, the word Maya. Maya does not mean illusion. Maya means that illusion which has been made into reality. The creative power of God has not created realities. Not created illusions, but only realities. Every experience we have is real. Experience is always real. Objects of experience are not. Experiencer is always real. Experience is always real. The objects that we associate the experience with are not real. But for the time we have the experience, they are made real. So that is why there is no need for anxiety. This world is very real. And I tell you, if you don't know, I can tell you the experience of a man who was talking like this in the Dera, in good old days. I was young. And he was telling, he's very enlightened, he's above the mind, he's gone to Parbrahm. He was talking to people and other satsangis gathered around him that we are very enlightened man has come. I could see just boastful, egoistic man trying to say things which he had never experienced. And I had a little safety pin, you know, and I opened it up. And I went quietly, he didn't notice, he was telling people about his higher experiences. I just pinched him. He got so angry and mad, ran after me. I could run faster than him, I knew. I, all, I remember I told him, where is your enlightenment now? How, what happened to your anger which was supposed to have gone away before you went to Parbara? I remember saying these things. That needle was real. <laughs> Not the man, the needle was very real. Shakespeare says in one of his plays, there never yet was philosopher who could bear the toothache patiently. He can give big talks. They are all made up words. But when he has toothache, it's real. One of the features given to us that make this world real is pain. When we have pain, it's absolutely a real world. That makes it real. That's why pain has been given to experience reality. So the whole creation is based upon an experience of reality, not illusion. So don't worry. Don't be anxious. It's all real. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to see you all again. Some people have asked for personal time. I'll see them now. Thank you.